because we have a few not available. And so the item two on the agenda is I received a message from the program manager last week saying that there's an awardee meeting Wednesday, November 8th. Uh, and they will only let one person from the project join. Last time they let two join and Narsimha and I went and um, I guess I should go. Just wanted to make sure that was okay with everybody and I will report back. I'll read the message. The meeting will focus on preparations and timeline for the review of your progress over the first two years. Probably we wanna know that. Uh, in order to keep the meeting short, we're inviting only one participant, da 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 da. Um, and, and it, oh, and it begins in order to help you streamline your efforts in the next months. So I guess they're going to tell us what to do and what not to do. It's a, it's a really short message. Um, I am interested and mystified about the level of communication from this program, given the stakes are pretty high and we get no, we get very little feedback. So I'll take whatever feedback I can get. Um, I will say I have heard nothing about our progress report. The, the um, progress program manager has to approve it. It hasn't been approved. There's been no feedback. Sapphires, we got, an, we got our approval the next day and but she doesn't answer emails really because we've sent her a question about um, our IRB and where we whether we need to report it and it's just not answered. And so I feel like the, the exact practices that we should be engaging in to do convergence are really not on display in this program. And it, it yeah, it just kind of mystifies me. So, um, but anyway, you know, they're giving us money right now. So we'll just go with it. Any questions or thoughts about that mysterious process? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm glad they're having that meeting. I look forward to hearing what we hear back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what's the date? It's better than having no meeting. <laughs> yeah. What's the date of that meeting? It is November 8th. Wednesday November 8th. Okay. At, yeah. At 4 p.m. Eastern and yeah, I'd, I'd love to not be the only person there because I really value when somebody else can give a take on what is being heard. Um, but yeah. So, okay, so um, along the lines of progress and so on, I tentatively and with great trepidation, I'm going to share some thoughts that I've had about structuring the project. And I think I'm just gonna, people can see my application. Okay, I can still see you, so that's, a, so I'll do this. So as you know, we've sort of had modelers and what we call the qualitative team. And then somewhere in the middle, we have, I didn't put, we have Stacy, and I didn't know what to call her. I gave her the name engagement team when we wrote the convergence report, but it's not, um, you know, I'm not sure what I would, what label I would place on that activity. The modelers so to speak, have been meeting every Tuesday at 8 a.m. The qualitative team has had meetings and we used to alternate them on Fridays, but this is a structure that kind of came up at our in-person meeting last December. And we thought it, it, it seemed like a natural connect collection and it was. And I think it was a great way to get started. And I've been noticing, though, over the last few months, as people have dug into the project, that there's actually a number of activities under what has been sweetly called the QT's uh, 
there's at least three things going on. And and as the, the modeling team has grown and included more people, there's more activities under the modelers as well. And so these two groups are useful for getting people together and they're useful about for they're useful for um for talking about certain things but they're not really coalescing in the same way they were at the beginning and as i was writing the progress report and thinking about how the project is structured it seemed like we were um we had outgrown this and so I have a new proposal, and that is that we have instead themes organized around processes and toward products. And I'll say a little more what I mean about these terms, but instead of just having a, a, a lump that's modelers, we might have one person leading a, a modeling effort that includes information from people who might be doing more qualitative work um, and going in a specific direction. So I've been trying to craft these and I'm still in an intermediate place, but I'm gonna share some of my thoughts and I want your comment and um, so th this is how I've been able to structure it in my head, but I don't want to get all the way to structuring it in my head and then visit it upon you. Instead, I want to hear what you think about this framing. So in thinking about the kinds of thing themes that we might have, each theme must have a designated leader a person who is responsible for making sure that it is moving forward. Um, each theme must have a driving scientific question. Now that question can change and evolve as the theme goes forward, but we have to know what the question is that we're answering. Um, each theme must have an externally facing product. So it, do it doesn't get to be just, I'm developing a model. Um, and in academia, very frequently that product is a journal paper, but I'll say more about that in a little bit. And then it must have a timeline for when that product will be produced. And we know that things take longer than we expect, but that's no excuse to not have any timeline at all. And then each theme may have specific roles, including mentoring for other individuals. So if you're in a theme, you should know what you're offering. You should know what's expected of you. Um, one of the features I'm gonna bring forward is that I'd like people who are considered more in junior roles to become those leaders. And so it, it may be that those individuals are not ready to produce a, a product on their own and may need guidance. Um, and that's where the mentoring comes in. But in terms of moving the product forward, most people are ready to be leaders. Okay, each theme may have a signature process or method. So for example, we could define a model as a signature process. This theme is around this process um, and it could be it's natural for it to be the leader's expertise, but that does not have to be the case. So some of our themes might be, this is a model. Some of our themes might be uh, we're engaging with communities and what, how are we doing that? And, and what is the outcome that we want? Each theme may have requests for contributions from other team members. Narsim, I really need you to do this. I really need you to tell me what you've learned about this. I really need you to describe my sampling, but those should be clear also. And then each theme can have an internal product, like a model or a data set. And those will really contribute to project continuity. We'll be able to build on those things. 
Um, but a theme doesn't have to have an internal product because I can imagine some that don't. So that that's, as, as I was trying to think of all the things we could possibly do, those seem to be the common elements of the themes. So um, the advantages I see in doing it this way is that we would be able to clarify responsibilities and who's responsible for action rather than we're all working on this, right? We're gonna we're we're gonna go forward. Um, people are actually responsible for getting to a product. If we're stuck, then they're responsible for calling on other people for help. I see this as maybe more able to integrate qualitative and quantitative outcomes because we're trying to get to an endpoint, and so we can call on people to help. And then the the last thing is, and this was what really struck me in the pro, uh, progress report, is that one of the things that NSF wants to see, and I'm on board with this, I'm not just doing it because NSF says it, um, they want to see the next generation growing into leadership. Um, Hopefully, if we do our job right, people who are senior, like me, get to retire. And then what are you leaving behind? You want to leave people who can lead in their own ideas, um, engage other people in convergence, and so on. So, and then I call this mentoring from below, right? We're not in charge. Somebody's leadership somebody is in leadership, but there, sometimes depending on the the uh, um, experience level of that person in the leadership, we may have to have a firm hand like, nope, that's not going to work. You know, you're, you're in charge, but let me just tell you that, it's the, that, that that direction needs to change. And so that may need to be stronger or, or lighter as appropriate. Um, and so then, can, so some considerations I had about this and worries, uh, how many do we want? How many themes do we want? And so um, I talked to Gemma, our team scientist about this, and I was thinking, oh, it'd be really nice to have three themes because three is a good number. And she, she agreed that that was a strong number. And as I started laying them out, I started feeling like I was being... I was excluding things by trying to force it into that three framework. And so I didn't. Um, when do I bring this forward and answer now? Uh, I chose to do it now. I mentioned it to Narsimus, I think that day or day or two after I thought of it. And now he's been saying, hey, when are we going to talk about that? And so, um, but but I've been mulling in my head how much do I put forward? That's my idea. And, and how much do I invite you to help me craft? And so I don't want to put forward nothing and have nothing to talk about anyway. So I'm doing it now, but I recognize it's not done. Um, I'm wondering who should be considered a leader. And so there are people I haven't appointed leaders. And I'll say specifically, Zara, I didn't appoint you a leader because you're a new PhD student, but I think in one year, you should be ready to lead. And we're going to grow you toward that. Um, Adam, I did not appoint you a leader um, because you now have a sort of full-time other job in my understanding. And so you can be a strong contributor, but you should not be a leader when you can't, uh, when you don't have the space to, to lead a whole theme. Um, and there's nobody else. Oh, Christina, I did not appoint a leader because she's, she'll be done in a month or so, two months. So, um, but, but I don't want to be exclusive. And I feel like almost everybody who's not leading should be considered a potential leader. Okay. And then what is a product? I said, we have to have a product. So for academics, it's like, publish, publish, publish. But, you know, honestly, I've seen a lot of, of journal papers and read a lot of journal papers that don't add value to the field that they're in. 
And so I define a product and I invite you to help me as an increment of value to the public in some way. It could be an intellectual contribution It and the vehicle that it's delivered in could be a journal paper. But I want us to think about a product as an increment of value. That's what I want to do. And, and frequently in, in the business that many of us are in, the way that's delivered is in scientific literature. But in the business that Stacy is in, it may not be. In fact, that may be a way to keep that increment from promoting public value. So is that, okay, so I'm gonna stop there for a minute and see what folks have to say. So I do have a couple of thoughts, but I wanted to wait to see if others did first. To me, it looks like a good direction. We can think more about what what you know deliverables and um, and that sort of thing. So, so it's it's a it's a good direction for me. Thanks, Adam. I recognize there are some pretty key pe people who are not here. Um, and part of the reason I've waited a while to bring this forward is I've talked to a few people offline about the direction too. And I, I know you haven't been able to talk to everybody. So, Kartik is a representative of the junior people. <laughs> um, how does this look to you? Does it look interesting or scary or somewhere in between or yeah, what is it? I think it's promising. So which is probably in between interesting and scary. <laughs> so because yeah, I think I'm definitely building the confidence to you know, sort of lead a discussion and bring my own thoughts to the group, things like that, which probably weren't the case a year ago when we started. So I do like the way things are moving and the way you've kind of framed it. So. No, Sama, you want to bring your thoughts in? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the motivations for this is, you know, we are trying to push for convergence, and I, I do see a, a little bit in our, more in our comfort zones is sticking with the talking about stuff that we know better, and we do want to have all of this uh, information flow across our teams. And there's many different aspects of convergence, but one is between qualitative data collection and quantitative modeling. And we, I don't know, you are doing more interaction than I am because you're there. I don't feel like I am. I'd like to, um, but I also feel some of this, yeah, so anyway, so that's what I think is important. So I'm glad you're pushing for this. I do think that it should be product driven uh, and organic a little bit. And I do feel we're far enough along that we should really push to have our products defined collectively. And then according to that, figure out who's working on which product. And that helps one way to define who should be talking to whom. Um, so I would love for us to, in the next step, at least, you know, roughly uh, d define our products collectively. Stuff, with, you know, what would we want to put forward in our June 2024 20, meeting? So the next couple of slides that I have are some sketches of what the themes could be. Um, so I'll try to give some concrete things to talk about. Um, Stacy, I acknowledge that I, I I did not put you in there yet because we haven't had a chance to talk lately. 
And so the people that I haven't connected with recently, I, I was trying to write to them so they'd be included. And then I was like, but then they're not being included. I'm just putting their name down and making something up for them. <laughs> and so I did not want to do that. Um, but, but I think it would, it, so I, I'm curious to hear what you think, Stacy. but I, I think that maybe we, as we've danced around the advisory boards, we've struggled to say what we're getting or what we're seeking and this might help um yeah one of the things that I was um thinking about when you had the previous slide with your sort of like inputs to outputs with multiple paths is that I hold on yeah you um Kind of thinking about like not just having community members or some stated community members or communities of practice be the like just receiver of the end output um and i would love to brainstorm and figure out like how how do other people besides the internal academic team that are working on on products not knowing what exactly all of those products are right now but how do we invite others who are external to that kind of academic pursuit to the conversation earlier? Um, and, and what do those relationships look like? Um, I can forward to you, Tammy, just the email that I sent back to um, Taylor because there was an email that came to came to me and Ryan and I wasn't at the meeting last week and there was this mapping project that was done mm -hmm. And there was a question about like, where is your work situated kind of in the overall framework map? So I I quickly jotted down some, some notes about where I felt like the community advisory is currently, but how do we move it towards? Um, and, and I don't know, so I, I'm also just kind of thinking about like, okay, so how does that work last week um, end up? you know, contributing to and is it in alignment with the framework that's been, you know, presented just now. Um, so happy to happy to talk more and um, definitely re-engage in November. We certainly said we were going to have some kind of October meeting when we had data and results. I don't think that we're there yet with data and results from mm. listening, um, the, yeah, listening project and surveys. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like to circle back around to what, you know, what, what does engagement and involvement look like if the work products or projects are, are looking at like synthesizing like large data sets? And I think that I'm hoping by framing some of this as you're moving towards something, but you're making requests and, and possibly some of those requests are to, for assistance in crafting what your product should be. Um, I, I'm trying to get a little more specific about what we're doing, even when we don't know what we're doing. Yeah. So I'm, um, I'd be happy to talk to you, especially when your, uh, your due date is passed. Yes. Anyone else want to say anything before I dive into some of the sketches, I'm calling them sketches, because I want you to understand that they're totally incomplete. And I will also say that I'm aware that both Narsa and Ellison are thinking of reviews and have put forward some outlines. And I did not include those in here because I'm hoping that you're able to frame those in a way that's like, here's what the product is, here's what the question is, and here are my requests of the other members of the team. But Kartik, I did start with you. And so 
I, I what I ask you to do is take these as sketches. Don't react, right? Or try not to react. I know you can't help it. Um, if I've got something wrong, then I want it. I it, it's a it's a call to adjust it, right? It's not it's not like this is what we must do. Um, so here we go. Uh, Kartik, I put yours up first. You're the leader of that data project. And I hazarded a question. What do available data tell us about well-being varying income levels? I think that could be sharper and I'm sure you're making it sharper. Uh, so we have to have a leader. We have to have a question. We have to have a product. And we're I'm we're thinking that the vehicle is a journal paper. Probably you, you said you're writing a paper. Um, so I would throw this out, call it completely or or at least fifty percent wrong, and invite you to alter it and to tell us what it is and and make requests. Oh, do you mean right now or just in general? Uh, I'm not thinking that it gets done right now, but if you have any immediate reactions, you're welcome to bring them forward. Now, I like the overall framing. It's not terribly off from what we've been working on. So the specifics are maybe slightly here and there, but overall it does capture, I think, what I'm trying to do. So I would love to see you and, and Narsima and that I or whoever on the team wants to be involved or, or whoever you want to be involved, refine that question so the team really knows what you're doing. We know what you're doing because you present it, but what is the question we're exploring? Okay, somebody else. Chris is not here. He can be in the spotlight. That'll be great. Okay. So um, Chris is, uh, Chris's focus is interviews. And uh, one of the things that he brought forward is he's, he's interested in both. And, and I, I'm, I'll do a bad job at paraphrasing him here. So my apologies, Chris, please update the group after you've watched the recording. Um, he's interested in both the common sense reasons why people make decisions that they do and the personally and socially rooted causes that often don't come forward in an economic analysis. So Chris's signature is interviews. He's invited Ryan to help him um, craft the sampling and the product is going to be synthesis of some of the themes and particularly things that we might not expect, but that are heard again and again. So again, Chris is not here to defend himself. This is how I perceive he's proceeding. And um, and so this is the, the sketch I would propose for iteration. Okay. Raidul's not here either, but I'm gonna help him. So both he and I are on the spot here. And um, so it's really easy, I've found in discussion with Raidul, it's really easy to create an ABM that just does things because ABMs are really good at doing things, right? Like you can put anything in an ABM, <laughs> an agent-based model. Uh, sorry for, I should have spelled that out. Um, and so it, it's got individuals, and they um, they can interact and you can tell them whatever to do. Um, my interest in this, and I need to work with Raidul for us to coalesce on a question, but my interest in, in that is representing the dynamic nature of decisions. And by dynamic, I mean, you see what happens. You see the transition that, that takes place and you're able to represent its causes. And so to me, both the agent-based model, the ABM, and my cohort model are about looking at time. They're, they're about, for you engineers, 
they're about kinetics versus equilibrium. Um, what? So my question, and again, this will be iterated, what factors hinder rapid progression of technical transitions? And then I threw in this word cost-effective. So people think if things are cost-effective, they're going to happen, right? But what if they don't? So assuming that cost-effectiveness is there, and I understand that's not always guaranteed, but if it's there, what else is in the way? So that's a, that's a thought. Um, and I would like to uh, work with Raidul to bring this out. It could be either his agent-based model or my cohort model. I'm thinking they're kind of, my cohort model is crude and clunky, but it does a lot of things. His agent-based model is is um, possibly more, uh, quote, modern, unquote. But I would say our product should be instructive experiment in which we show how an agent can be limiting. And that agent may be the occupant, it may be a government, or it, but at least one limiting agent that that hasn't been brought forward before. As part of this, this is not listed in the requests because I didn't want to make the letters too tiny, but I believe <coughs> it next Friday that uh, Raidul is going to lead a discussion about what does the occupant agent look like? What characteristics do we represent? Let's say you've got this agent that's called an occupant in a house making decisions. What are the things we need to know about that person? So what features does it have? And also what functions does it have? What does it do? When it makes a decision, does it only look at its own income? Presumably it looks at the cost, which is a, a feature of an object and so on. So that's that's another theme that Raidul is gonna lead. And Sarah, I know you're here, you're not gonna see yourself in the sketches, but you are gonna put yourself in a sketch. And we'll be working on that over the next weeks. Oh, what else did I pull up? Taylor. Um, here comes the participatory system mapping. There's been some discussion around how to make this happen. Because there's been some great discussions about what it's for. And then we got a little bit stuck on how to move it forward. So we're putting Taylor in charge of operationalizing this. Um, we're iterating or working on how much she will be involved herself as a facilitator, um, probably a fair bit. And uh, we'll be asking Adam for, for support because he did so much reading about it. And we'll be asking Raidul to help us use network tools to compare. Um, but the product is ultimately going to be a comparison of different maps. Groups of people with different functions, do they see the same change levers? Do they see change the same way? So this is where we're get, getting into, um, we've broken it a little bit beyond what we used to call elites. Now we're saying, hey, elites constitute a bunch of people. Some of them are running programs. Some of them are just envisioning programs. Um, and so let's identify exactly who they are. Stacy, this is a place where we're probably going to tap you because we have been wondering whether the group you gathered would be, uh, would participate in this sort of thing. So we can talk about that offline, but that's a, it's a sketch of the theme that we've been calling participatory system mapping.
So I think I only put four. Oh yeah, I only put four. And then I have some comments on how what to do with this. So now that I've thrown out some examples, does anyone want to say something or propose their own? I mean, I have a couple of thoughts, but I'm going to wait. Tell me what's MFB. Oh, mentoring from below. The leader in service. Thanks for leaving space, Narsuma. Do you wanna do you wanna comment? Yeah, I had two things I wanted to say. One of them is you mentioned the review paper and you know I I yeah. Not even sure how I want to formulate that. But the other product I thought we are trying to develop is with Christina, you know, which is um, more concrete. And it's may even be overlapping in, in terms of its question with Raidul or maybe even Chris. But it's just using a different process and different data set. It's to ask the question how prior conditions influence um, people's decision to take up a heat pump or not mm. um, and looks like we have a pretty good plan with the data I have to see what it's what it says so that's one product I'll try to craft as well the other thing I'm noticing is I'm looking at these products we're talking about so far and I'm not seeing an obvious cross-pollination across QTs and modelers it's possible I think for example the ABM could be informed by some data that's collected, or maybe by the PSM, I don't know. Depends where you go with it. Um, and I'm hoping the review paper could benefit from Raidul's inputs. And maybe we could collaborate with Ellison. Maybe we do end up working on a similar paper, I don't know. Other than that, you know, if we're trying to use this as a vehicle to get more cross-pollination, I'm not seeing that much, and I don't know if how we if that says something about the products we're working towards, or if we should now that we have the products laid out, let's brainstorm how we can really try and push much more knowledge transfer. How can how can these products be much better informed or improved by including more perspectives? That's a really great point, Narsim. I think we should push ourselves in that way. So one, I think the one where I see them immediately coming together is in the last one with the levers where you actually do participatory system mapping, but then you apply network tools to compare them. And that's the first step toward bringing those system maps into the models. But I think there's a lot more to do, you're right, in terms of integration. That's good. I think that would be useful to explore. I'm just thinking also, if that's the case, even with your ABM cohort model being informed by QT data, it brings up the sequence issue, which I know we're always trying to avoid any dependencies, but there may be one. So we have to be realistic about the timeline, right? If So when is it? We we know we have some slowdown with the interviews, but is there a plan for when the PSM groups may meet? Because there has to be enough time to process what we learn from that, and then for you to incorporate that into modeling. So yeah, we have to be realistic about that and figure out uh, what what's realistic based on what we can actually achieve. Yeah, and I think we have um, we. 
we have a plan for moving forward. I don't, so I don't want to get too far into the details of each theme right now, but I'm happy to do that separately. Um, yeah, yeah. But the, the, I'll just say the PSM we've, and, and Taylor, if you want to comment on this too, on, in terms of the timing, I think we can get as far as doing some and applying network tools. And that is the promise that it can go into modeling. And that's our first step. And Taylor, do you want to say anything about the timing on that? Yeah, um, I think we've talked about it a little bit, you know, it's fairly fresh start on this restructuring, but um, we want to get some kind of practice sessions together first so we can really iron out our facilitation um, really this season. And then we're hoping to have a first session in January is our current goal. But um, just to kind of get us past, it's hard to get anybody together for for anything really over the holiday period. So we think that's a more realistic time to think we'd be able to get some, um, some of our participants in. Um, and then also give us time to kind of iron out exactly what we need to do and have an efficient process that gets us kind of what we what we want. <laughs> so we want to be testing this on grad students in the fall so that we don't break <laughs> the actual subjects. <laughs> so and the timeline includes we we've really only done the the background work. Uh, or Adam has, I shouldn't say we, um, and the timeline includes Taylor, Ellison, and I getting trained and mentored by somebody with this experience and then holding practice sessions before we go into the real thing. I should clarify too, I've got some writing done. Um, Ellison and I have a paper to revise um, that's also sort of on participation. Well, it's, it's on a related topic like participation in energy efficiency programs. And one of the reviewers' concerns um, was that we didn't cite enough European literature, which was kind of by design, because we felt like the European context was very different in terms of like household decision making around energy. But I'm going back and trying to go through this. And there's a lot more, um, fortunately or unfortunately, from um, from different European contexts. Um, about behaviors and decision making around energy in the home. Um, so there's at least a, a baseline of some things written. Okay, so we are currently past time. So let me just say a little bit about the timeline. Um, first of all, don't wait. Don't, it, and one of the reasons I wanted to bring this forward now is to so that people aren't expecting that something is going to happen and you can't do anything productive until it's settled. Uh, you can, Kartik, for example, Taylor, you can take the, the reins and, and just say, okay, I'm in charge of a theme and we're going to be settling it. I would like to get to Thanksgiving with the theme sketches settled, all of them. So that means I'll be having offline conversations and we'll bring some of these discussions forward to our team meetings. Um, so you can expect me to be asking you for time. And then our, you may remember Gemma who held some exercises for us. I spoke with her. And she said, well, around this time, teams usually need leadership training. And I said, well, funny, you should mention that because uh, what what I, I would like to do is set up this structure and then there's, there's going to be a li little bit of training on for the leaders, but also for the people who back them up. So I don't know if that will come before Thanksgiving or um, or into into December, but that's hopefully coming forward.
And so if you have a product like Narcima, your, your review, I would love to sit down with you and you've expressed a desire to sit with me and Raidul uh, to figure out what that looks like as a, as a theme, or we can, we can choose a name that's not theme. It's kind of weird. I couldn't think of a better one. Um, yeah, sure. And, and sometimes, so in each theme, there's a request that you make. Sometimes your request is I'm stuck on this. I need help moving it forward. But as the leader of a theme, that's going to be on you to keep moving it forward and ask for help if you, if, if it's not. So I'm going to close now or soon unless anyone has last comments. All right. So expect that we're going to be working on this kind of framing and just trying to get or bringing forward clarity. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Have a good weekend.